You wanted to know what time you should put your toddler to bed and between the age of one and two, children need like 12 to 14 hours of sleep total during each 24 hour period. And some of this is going to happen at night and some of it will happen during the day. A lot of kids at this age are still taking a nap in the afternoon. And so if your child's taking a two hour nap, then they may only need like maybe nine or 10 hours of sleep at night. And the time at which you put them to bed is totally up to you. Families just have different routines and some are night owls and some go to bed early and wake up early and so just do what's best for you. Just make sure that you're picking a consistent bedtime and sticking to it and develop a bedtime routine that's going to teach your little one that it's time to calm down and relax and get ready for bed. For a lot of kids, this is a bath and a bedtime story, maybe some time with lullabies or rocking with mom and dad. Whatever it is, keep it short and sweet, 15 or 30 minutes at the most, and decide now what types of things you're going to let your toddler get away with. Oftentimes they'll try to be defiant or, or stretch out the bedtime routine by continuously throwing toys or whatever it might be out of the crib because they want your attention and they know that you'll come back in and give it to them. So you have to decide what you're going to put up with and be persistent about it. And like I said before, just do your best to keep bedtime routines as simple as possible and do it around the same time each night. It's very normal for toddlers to have separation anxiety and so when you leave the room they're probably going to cry and that's okay as long as they've been fed and changed and loved and they're safe then you can just leave the room and let them cry and they it will involve some crying because they need to learn how to go to sleep without help from you and how to self-soothe after the first birthday you can begin introducing like a new favorite um, stuffed animal or a blanket, something that will comfort your child. And after giving this to them, then they may be able to turn to that for comfort instead of needing you in the middle of the night when they wake up. You may find that you have to sleep train your child and this will involve again just leaving the room and letting them cry and you can let them cry for as long as you're comfortable with it. And as parents, you know, you know that your children cry for different reasons and so sometimes their cries are just because they want you and they will get louder and more serious about it because they're mad that you're not coming to get them. But if you ever feel like they're crying because they have an immediate need or they're in pain or in danger, then of course go check on them. But you have to be persistent about this for at least four to seven nights and it will teach your baby how to self-soothe. You can also try a more graduated approach where you let your baby cry for five or 10 minutes then you go in and check on them. But resist any and all urges to turn on the lights, talk with them, pick them up or do anything of the sort because that's just going to reinforce the crying. Just go in the room and gently touch their tummy or head and then turn around and walk right back out of the room. And they'll probably continue to cry, so the next time give it 10 to 15 minutes before you go in and do the same thing. The next time 20 to 30, and if needs be, the next time maybe 45 minutes. And this is going to be hard because it will draw out the process and you may not get any sleep for a week, but if you're persistent about it, it will pay off and you should all be sleeping better soon. Now one other thing to think about is the environment that your baby's sleeping in. Like maybe they're early risers and so putting some good um, dark curtains on the windows will help your baby sleep in longer. Or maybe there's noises or different things in the middle of the night that are waking your baby up. Maybe having a noise machine or a fan in the room will help to, to dampen the noise outside of the baby's room so that they sleep a little bit better throughout the night. Something to also consider with toddlers is that if they're sleeping in a toddler bed and can get out, they may want to get out and play with toys. And so sometimes parents find it helpful to make the bedroom the place where the child sleeps and to create a separate toy room where the child doesn't have access to toys at night if it's a distraction to them. Along with that, when babies are sleeping in toddler beds, they can escape and come into your room and they want to talk with you and get into bed with you. And again, you have to resist the urge to do this because it will reinforce their waking. So, so be firm about it, walk them back to their room, make it clear that that's where they're going to sleep. Tuck them back in and go back to your own room. These are often the beginnings of tough love because to establish and reinforce healthy sleep patterns, you have to be firm about where they sleep, when they sleep, and where you sleep as well. If you have more questions or concerns about it, talk with your pediatrician. And if you have more questions in the future for me, feel free to ask them on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash Intermountain Moms and recommend us to your friends and family too.